Imagine a world where the sum of all knowledge is accessible for anyone. Knowledge is being presented in so many different ways. Some of it is text and you can easily access and skim through it. Some of it you have to see and some of it you have to touch and experience. We're having this remote experience today right now. I'd love to be in Leipzig with you um, or together with you. But we can't because times are crazy. And the digital world at least makes it possible to gain knowledge on a different, in a different way. And of course, we at Wikimedia Deutschland, Wikimedia Deutschland, uh, we have, we see that and we try to provide good content for everyone. We try to uh, help the community of the Wikisphere, of the Wikiversum, uh, like in the Wikidata community, in the Wikipedia community or Wikimedia Commons and so many more projects to access great sources to make its work in different contexts to be able to remix knowledge to put it to good use and to reach an audience worldwide it's been 20 years now and the wikipedia has started without much photos and there was even a, even a debate going on whether photos and images um, are um, are good for the wikipedia because um, text you can easily edit and anyone can do it but uh, photos and videos uh, there's a there's a whole different approach and there's a whole more um, uh, more skills to or other sets of skills to be able to access and to edit it and that makes it harder to um, to renew stuff and to adapt it and but also to create it and the communities and the volunteers in the in the wikisphere they are sometimes having a hard time to get good CGI's, for example, or to get good graphics, to make those, to make uh, beautiful articles and uh, to make good shows. Um, they are not always available. It's It costs money, the studio, the equipment, and um, the, the graphics, the producing. And there's already a lot of money spent on producing that kind of content. And we want to bring that to good use in Wikipedia and in the other spheres. We're, we have been reaching out, uh, we have been approached by the community to reach out to the public broadcasters. And that's what we did. And this is our journey. And I want to go on this together with you, a little bit of recap, and then a way of you to help us with that, with that, uh, with that mission and to also reach out and bring good content into the public sphere to really be able to help others, uh, to help educators in those crazy times and, uh, yeah, together make the sum of all knowledge available to anyone in different ways. Not only text, but also videos uh, like this one. So the talk is called Public Service, Public Value, and the uh, subline is uh, When Stars Collide. There's a reason for that. Um, you know, I could talk now about uh, how stars are uh, going around each other and they attract each other and they, then they come together and then there's, there's a bang and sometimes there's a neutron star and then shooting uh, all kinds of crazy stuff out of it, which we can then measure here on Earth. I could also show you this video. And I think the video uh, pro uh, provided here with NASA content uh, would be a much better way to approach this knowledge. And the beautiful thing about this, not only because it's good stuff coming out of it, and uh, which matches the talk, but also that the NASA content is not uh, copyright protected, most of it, uh, because it's provided by a federal agency and there's uh, US copyright law. Um, but also um, the ESA, the, the European Space Agency, um, it also now provides um, content under a, under a public or under an open license, which can be adapted. So we had a big publicly funded agency, the ESA, which produced good content, scientific content, which could be used to, or could be put to good use. And they decided, actively decided to adapt Creative Commons licensing to adapt open licenses so that people could do good stuff with it. And um, 
that's what we wanted to public broadcasters to do as well, which um, was not an easy task, but we had, we had great experiences and cooperations and we're working together now really good. The public broadcasters in Germany are having a budget of about eight, eight, uh, eight milliarden or eight billion euros per annum, and um, they make content available online. Well, you can access it. You can't really download most of it. You cannot remix it, which is a problem for educators because remix is like the, the standard case, um, the everyday case for for teachers. I used to be a teacher. I took screenshots, put them on papers and uh, built little quizzes out of, out of stuff or not used a whole broadcast, but parts of it. And um, that's not really how, um, how I can use public broadcast most of the time because it's, uh, it has all rights reserved and uh, I can just use it in a non-commercial manner and uh, And there, there lies the first problem. What is non-commercial when I'm teaching in a public school? Okay, but when I'm teaching in the afternoon uh, to um, in kind of overtime paid by the hour um, to, to, to help a student um, privately or when I'm having a blog or a website and there's, uh, there's advertisements on that to, uh, pay or to pay the fees for the hosting. Is this an, is, do I then monetize the content or... Um, if there's a, if there's a, a, pub, a, a private partnership and the sponsoring there of um, putting it in student paper and publishing it and then selling the student paper because prints, uh, printing stuff costs, is this then monetized? Is this commercial? Is it not? So there's a, a whole can of worms right there. So the the content that's provided by the public broadcasters, bottom line, is not usable for. Uh, for any day use and not usable for Wikipedia, at least not for remix and republishing uh, issues. Um, that's bad. And that's especially when there's 8 billion euros every year going into those public broadcasters. That should be something we should uh, engage in. Now, we approach them. And in most cases, when you approach the, uh, the, the lawyers of the public broadcasters, they say, well, We'd like if you use that content, but if you are asking me for permission to use that content in that specific context, I have to say no. If you, are, if you ask me, I have to say no. And this is a bullshit situation right there. I mean, you have someone who provides good non-fictional content which should be used for educational use. He wants it to be used in that way. There's an educator who wants to use it in that way, but we can come together because of licensing policies. I know it's legally right, but it still feels wrong. And we could, I, um, other than piracy, we can do something about it. I mean, the content the public broadcasters provide, they are, they are editorially independent. So they may be publicly funded, but the politics stay out of the, of the uh, editorial uh, process. So there may be some in the, in the supervisory boards, And um, there's, there's a whole a debate going on about that in Germany, for example. But the, the editors are free and there's good content produced and you can, content you can trust on. Content where there's, there's a, a whole set of producers behind it who, who fact check and um, who, if they make a mistake, um, make it right again. The public broadcasters are non-for-profit and they want to provide public content. Oh, as they call it, public value. And I think we can help with that. We have this beautiful big platform where anyone who's searching for information lands at some point, whether he's approaching it uh, via, via speech assistance, uh, which is then asking Wikipedia or Wikidata for information, or whether he just um, puts it into to a search, search box and then finds it and accesses, uh, for example, the text in Wikipedia. Um, the content can be reused in all kinds of manners because it is public, it is openly licensed. Like uh, most likely with, uh, um, so there's a whole range of uh, licenses you can choose. We choose the, the most open licenses of Wikipedia, that's a community decision, um, CC BY, CC BY share alike, or even CC zero. 
Um, I won't go too deep into that, but uh, just you just have to remember, you can use that content, you can remix it, you can put it into another content. You have always have to uh, name the source, although um, if it's not CC0, you always have to name the source. And um, if you edit it, um, you have to make that visible. Um, yeah, but um, the content provided by the public broadcasters, in this case the ARD, which is a public broadcast in Germany, is of course um, provided uh, by um, all rights reserved. So you can't do a lot with it. You can access it still, it's good stuff, and there's a lot of years in the, in the Mediathek in the, and on YouTube and stuff. But there is potential. And uh, I'll show you why. Um, we had we had a campaign then. It was called Public Money, Public Content. You may uh, see where this is coming from. Um, and uh, we approached the public broadcasters to work together on this with the same argument I just made here to you. Um, we, in every step of the way, we worked together with the community and with the awesome people of Wikilove's broadcast. And um, we are... Um, uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. So first, um, some public broadcasters, in this case Funk, which is a corporation between the big, two big public broadcasters in Germany um, uh, for um, who are producing content for young people and uh, younger audiences, uh, they tried to like summarize Wikipedia pages, which is a problem uh, for the community because they say, well, it's nice if you summarize it, but if the article changes, can we then change the video? No, uh, video editing is more expensive and uh, you have to have uh, certain programs for that and skills uh, that, um, I, that fewer people have. So there's a, little, um, a f uh, smaller community to do it. So eh, that's, that's not content we really can use on Wikipedia. Um, although the videos were quite... Um, they were quite high quality, uh, they were rejected by the Wikipedia community. We came together in best faith, faith <laughs> but um, this just didn't work out, as it sometimes does. Next try was to provide um, pictures uh, of, um, of people, um, in this case there was yeah, there was a reportage, um, a portrait of um, of um, of an actor or actress in this case, and uh, they put that in in Wikimedia Commons so that it could be used, for example, on Wikipedia, and it was used in several pages and also in, in pages all over the internet, uh, always with a little mark uh, that the content was provided by the public broadcaster, which is fine. But um, community. Uh, or some community members and said, well, this photo is well too good to be pu um, publicly licensed. So there's a whole other kind of worms and another problem right there. We overcame that um, with, um, with a great pilot project, uh, who, which I want to talk about right now. And if you are listening in a public broadcaster or uh, working together with public broadcasters somewhere in the world, you should now be very interested. Um, because what we achieved here is, public, is openly licensed content being reused on all sorts of sites. We cannot track everything, but we can track what we already did, like in the in the own mediatek, in the uh, in the own channels of the of the ZDF, and on the YouTube channels and stuff. We can see how often this uh, this content was approached and was used. We can track how much it was used in Wikipedia and how often it was clicked on. And we can guess because it has been cope or it has been published as well because provided under a free and open license on school server and stuff like that. Uh, so on networks for schools and on servers that provide educational content. And we can see that it's being adapted there and that the community, the educational community, really wants to do things with it and is putting it to good use. How much? Come to that in a minute. Um, first, the ZDF uh, started with a uh, with climate and um, environmentally uh, connected content um, to and provided a material from there. 
So they came together with the producers, with the editors, uh, with everyone involved in the process, and they said, um, in cooperation with us, we also uh, gave uh, some hints maybe, um, we cannot give the whole episode of Terex, which is big, beautiful, and very expensive, and has a lot of third-party content, into the public domain, or into um, or licenses openly. Um, it's just too expensive and not really, um, it, we cannot really do that. But there are some con there is some content inside these episodes which is built or which is produced completely in-house or which we can, uh, which we can target and uh, which we can buy the licenses for uh, without uh, straining our budget too much. So videos, CGI's, short pieces that are pro being produced anyways. They just have to be licensed under a CC license as well and then uploaded into Wikimedia Commons. So this was the way to go for the CDF and for the Terra X team. And they did it and they put a lot of videos there, which was then adapted by uh, the community, uh, the Wikipedia community. So they, um, the CDF didn't do any editing in the Wikipedia. They just gave their input, their content to the comments. And then there was good stuff happening by the community. They adapted it and put it into uh, mostly German speaking because of course it's German videos, German speaking um, Wikipedia, German language Wikipedia articles, also some English English Wikipedia articles. Um, but there was also another, another beautiful thing happening as you can see right here. Uh, they also did now it started to do read-ups and because they saw it's good it's high quality content we can build upon that we can remix it and uh, we can read up it in dutch in welsh in esperanto and we can put subtitles on there in latin and in um, dutch and catalan and uh in spanish so this content is now free and is evolving. And it's good, high quality, non-fictional, mostly scientific content that helps the Wikipedia communities to further reach their audience, to help provide knowledge to everyone, even if you're maybe um, visually impaired or, um, or mentally impaired, or you just don't want to read a long text right now because your head is buzzing and there's not enough coffee in the world. And you can just watch a video to maybe grasp uh, the, the, the idea of this specific article or this, uh, this paragraph there a little better. It's another way of providing information and it works together like a charm. And we can see that also by the numbers um, on which those files are approached. So we tried first to do a page view analysis. So we put all the content, uh, we, we monitored in which sites is the content uh, implemented in or embedded in and then uh, uh, try to measure the, uh, the viewership of the, of the pages, which didn't really work because there was, uh, now it's over 120 files and we cannot really reproduce that. Uh, we also tried to do a media view counter, um, which uh, also then strained at some point, it, uh, it exceeded the limitations of the tools we were having uh, to measure that uh, uh, as soon as the files were too many. So we could like do, um, uh, a direct comparison of files, how they're performing, how they're doing, um, but we couldn't uh, really track all of them. So then a great colleague of mine, uh, he, um, Amir, he built this beautiful media views tool so that you can uh, really monitor a whole category. So we can uh, uh, monitor how often the files in the category um, of TerraX uh, provided videos um, you see the short link right there, bits.ly slash terrax30. So the last 30 days of usage of terrax content from Wikimedia Commons. Um, and we can see a monthly usage of over a million views, which is a lot. Because this is not just some someone randomly browsing and finding this video and it's, and it's on autoplay, but searching for information on a topic uh, like uh, the Taj Mahal or, uh, or like uh, the, the harbor of Cartago or, or something like that um, or COVID vaccine and 
then they're clicking on the article, they're clicking on the video, embed it in the article and view it. And this is a very qualified uh, counter right there. And this happens over a million times with the content that the ZDF has provided now every month and still growing. And the, that's good in several ways. First, it's great for the community because they can more easily uh, reach their, their audience and they can help the audience understand the topic better. It makes Wikipedia more beautiful for the audience, of course. We just talked about that. And also for the, uh, for the content provider because, of course, the content is branded. There's a little logo in there and it's called uh, Videos Provided by Terex. I have uh, stated the, the, um, the brand a few times now. And, um, of course, anyone who uses it has to quote the ZDF and Terex at that point. It has to give attribution, which is good for the brand and um, it makes it more... Um, makes it more likely that uh, at, um, at some other point when you're searching for information on the topic, you'll be circling back to, uh, to Terex, for example, and hopefully to Wikipedia. Um, but there's more. Um, we have done some uh, high-level uh, high roundtables um, where we brought together um, unions, teachers' unions, as well as journalists' unions, as well as young journalists, um, people who work in research um, and in universities, um, library organizations, and uh, of course the Wikipedia community, um, to see how we better can work together and what we can do and how we can monitor it and what is likely to be done and what not. Um, because, of course, also the public broadcasters have wishes for the community and for Wikimedia Deutschland, and as well as the other way around. Uh, our main arguments here are that it's it's uh, improves the public good. Uh, it has it has um, it saves taxes if schools, public schools, don't have to buy additional video content. For example, they can but can use the content that is already publicly funded for free. Um, it strengthens the cooperation between different spheres of making knowledge available and it's um, further helping them reaching their audience. And exactly the platforms that they're searching for uh, on, that they're searching for information on. So as I said, our campaign was called uh, Public Money, Public Good. And there were some reactions and we had some great corporations uh, coming after that. I, now at this point, have to... Um, thank all the stakeholders that supported the campaign, not only the Chaos Communication Club, uh, Chaos Computer Club, um, but also the Libraries Association, the Teachers Associations in Germany, and uh, Kiron University, and uh, some others that you can see there. If you're a stakeholder on an international level and want to join this uh, this claim for more content uh, provided by the public broadcasters, reach out to me, band.fiedler at wikimedia.de, and we can talk about it, or maybe after that, in the Q&A. So we wrote a lot of letters. There were uh, 10,000 10, little postcards uh, being sent to the public broadcasters where anyone could uh, put a little comment, I want to use that because... Da, 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 da. And there were a lot of educators, teachers, and um, um, yeah, knowledge workers who reached out to us and said, finally, I wanted to use or I have used in a limited way the content already and there's so much more and so much better stuff I want to do with it. I want to screenshot it and put it on a paper and then build a quiz out, quiz out of it, whatever. And um, there are the limitations of copyright and the Creative Commons licensing makes it easier for me. Um, also, the ID, the second or the, another really big public broadcast in Germany, also tried to adapt um, Creative Commons licensing. They did, even with their most important broadcasts like Tagesschau, which is uh, the, uh, the common news broadcast for, for every German. Um, they, they are uh, providing graphics and uh, short videos under a Creative Commons NCND, so none for commercial and uh, uh, no variations uh, stuff. Um, so at least it is available indefinitely now, so it can be linked upon and it can be used in certain ways, of, especially in, in, uh, in schools. But you cannot really use it on Wikipedia right now. They also um, put some podcasts like the coronavirus update, which is like uh, one of the most listened to podcasts right now, um, a scientific po uh, podcasts here in Germany um, under a CC license, uh, which is also uh, 
great a great step and um there there's a reason why they where they are hesitant to put content under a more open license not only because of licensing issues and uh, because of the money you have to you have to additionally pay for it but also in fear of uh, there's uh, there's some um yes yeah, some uses that they don't want in our experience though we see that on the ZDF content there's a lot of good stuff happening with it and none of the fears were matched um none of the fears really came true um there 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 are adaptations and there are readups but they are good they are in in the way we would have wanted it and um sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith and see good stuff happening right as of right now the licensing policies and the public broadcasters they make so the bad stuff's happening anyway. People will steal it, will adapt it, will um, put little horns on people's heads and whatever, and they don't really care about copyright. Um, which also would not be possible with Creative Commons because um, there's uh, there's limitations to, uh, to the license you give them with Creative Commons and putting it in a context where it's not, it's not right uh, is one of that those limitations. But whatever. But Creative Commons makes the uses you want to give uh, you want to make possible, possible, available, and this all very, uh, very much cheaply. And there will be stuff coming out uh, from the idea, I hope. As of now, there uh, this is the chair of the ID of the big public broadcast in Germany, and they say it's like it's a cornerstone, it's, a, it's an important building block on which uh, um, how to make our content available uh, indefinitely as possible and um, easily as accessible as possible. Even this press release, though, you see on the photo right there, there's uh, all rights reserved. So this is copyrighted content, um, which I quote here. Um, so way to go. But there's good stuff. There's good faith. I have good faith. And there's a lot of goodwill on all institutions. And we're working together by the, to, that, to that common goal. There's also a global task force uh, of uh, public broadcasters. Um, like, uh, And they're saying... Um, we share the common duty to inform, educate, and entertain. Um, the engagement with audiences of all ages across a range of broadcast and online services, Wikipedia, is critical to our success in serving them whenever, wherever, and however they want. And to reach that, dear public broadcasters all around the world, whether you're the NPR, the NHK, the PBS, the BBC, the RAA, CBC, EBC, or RF. Your content should be freely licensed where freely licensed wherever possible. It should be paid fairly, it should be accessible everywhere, and it should be accessible anytime. And then we can build upon it, and there's all kinds of good stuff shooting out of it. And we can measure that now. So our mission is clear and there's a lot of good people working together on all sides to make it possible and i have to thank all the partners that we've uh, been doing great stuff up until now and will be doing great stuff in the years to come and uh, the community who is uh, who is open for adapting the content and putting it to good use on on, on different wikipedia pages and if you're a public broadcaster and think, well, I want that. I want a part of that. Feel free to reach out to us and we will make and bring this thing international. Um, our arguments condensed are there at bit.ly slash public broadcast on the Medium blog of uh, the Wikimedia Foundation, where um, we're trying to condensate this whole talk uh, into, into a few paragraphs. Um, thank you for listening for attending this session here and i'm very happy to take your questions now and to together free more great content to build amazing stuff out of it thank you very much Pause. we are now connected to our speaker remotely not by a satellite uh, just like the the usual public broadcasting studios do, but via internet, because we're modern, with Bernd Tiedler, who is our correspondent today, more or less. Hello, Bernd, how are you today? 
Hello, I'm fine and I hope you are all as well. Um, you've heard a lot and I hope you have some questions for me. <laughs> We're still waiting for questions. You can still ask them via IRC or Twitter with the hashtag rc 3 wikipaka We're listening to all of them and we'll relay them to our speaker here. Uh, you, you had an interesting slide uh, at the end of your talk, you're towards the end of your talk with Tom Burrow, who was stating something along the lines of CC licenses are a, an important part of what the public broadcasting institutions in Germany are doing. And uh, at the very bottom right, you, you made me aware of that. I didn't even see it first, that there was an all rights reserved clause. This looks for me like there is a cultural cultural obstacle still to be, to be surmounted, to be surpassed. Is there any hope that this cultural change is taking, uh, taking place? Yes. Okay, it's this was easy. an old... That wasn't <laughs> okay. How would you say <laughs> this? Well, it's it's really not easy. Um, they are buying licenses, and then they can do a limited and limited um, limited stuff with it. And they are now they have a lot of contracts. And um, if you have a, a big ship like like the ideas at CTF, you have all kinds of standard contracts. And you have to change those first before you can do anything. So that's a um, chicken and egg problem. Um, the authors say we can't because they are not the contracts are not there. So I can't waive any rights. And the and uh, the public broadcasters say well the authors wouldn't agree to it. So we don't have the contracts yet. Um, and there's a big cultural change going on right now. There's a lot of uh, redaction, a lot of editors, a lot of content creators who want to try out stuff, who are reaching out to us. But it takes time because it's a big wheel we're trying to turn here. And big wheels take time to start turning. Well, 2020 has uh, taught us to, to be patient and wait for changes, but there might be some people in the audience who, who don't want to wait. And, and what, you, what you told me about these standard contracts sounds awfully familiar um, for people who work, in, who work with public administrations who, have, who are facing similar uh, problems with subcontractors and, and uh, people they depend upon. And one way that has been shown in, in that realm would be to to provide boilerplate licenses that the that the institutions can actually use and, and reuse. Has anybody tried that? Um, yeah, well, they they are using Creative Commons right now, but um, I think um, what what exactly do we with boilerplate licenses? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, Creative Commons is of, is of course a uh -huh. boilerplate license for sub-licensing, okay. but you told me about, um, as far as I understand it, uh, the public uh, broadcasting institutions use subcontractors to to actually produce uh, their contents, and they would have yeah. to to um, enter contracts and new licenses mm -hmm. that permit sub-licensing yeah. under Creative Commons uh, clauses. So, if somebody, let's say Wikimedia or some other instance, but to provide the public broadcasters with boilerplate licenses for their subcontractors, wouldn't that be an option? Uh, <laughs> if we not 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 uh, to want to not to want to no, drop no. the hot potato we, in your lap, but um, we can't uh, we can't uh, look that far into the into the contract prisoners of the public broadcasters and their sub uh, subcontractors. But um, this is exactly what how Terra X um, did in the end. So they have a, they are having a subcontractor, and at the very beginning of the of the um, process of the broadcasting process and production process, they said, "Well, uh, let's try this, and we will take some of the, some of the stuff and release it under Creative Commons. Are you all right with that?" Um, on an, in an ongoing production, and most contracts are already set, and you always go back to the same contractor. Um, uh, you can't really do that, or that's that's hard. You just uh, you need an outside impulse for that, and that's where the audience comes uh, comes into play, because I bet all of you have a as um, a loved podcast or some uh, some uh, broadcast that uh, that you see by at the public broadcasters, and you want to bring to the comments or content you want to bring into the comments, and of course you can reach out to the to the broadcaster, you can reach out to the redaction, and say. We want to do that. We want to see that in the comments. Why isn't it? And then they have to ask the, the legal people, and the legal people then sometimes consult with us, and then we can try to do something. Um, so uh, it's big wheels, but 
many, many small angles where you can attack. <laughs> that that's lo sounds like a call to action for me. Um, for people who are watching right now and listening right now, where would they direct such que questions? Would they just add uh, ZDF or add uh, the press or whatever at, on Twitter? Or is there any way that is uh, more impactful, maybe send a fax or something like that? You know what? Do that right now. <laughs> you can, right now, during this Q&A, you can add ZDF and add ARD Presse uh, to do just that. And there are people there watching that, uh, watching it. And the more impulses there, there are, the more likely they will be moving. But also uh, standard email, they are read. Like every program, every input from, from audiences is being read at the public broadcasters offices. So uh, just type an email and say, I love your content. Why isn't it Creative Commons? Cheers. And, um, and there you go. This is, um, this helps us a lot. And it helps the people inside the houses, inside the public broadcasters who really want to get things going. But they are also the ones who say, we don't really need to change that, do we? But you and us, we have to show them that the future lies in Creative Commons licensing and an open licensing and not just uh, getting on with not providing open content and deleting stuff that is good and that could have been reused if only it would have been licensed correctly. Okay, so we are not screaming into the void, but we have allies within the broadcasting authorities that really want our help, actually. Is that true? It is. And there are a lot of uh, people doing the hard work. Uh, my, I mean, my job is easy. I'm, from, I'm sitting at the outside and saying, hmm, why don't you, why couldn't you? Oh, that would be a good idea. And they are uh, confronted with all the people who know the ifs and whens and uh, who always say no because. And they're finding reasons why this uh, sh shouldn't be possible. But we are now going on from the production level because the, the, the content providers, they want their products and their content to be remixed. We are also going from the political level because that's important. It's public broadcasters, obviously. Um, and we are going on uh, from the intendantens, so from the chair level. And um, I mean, everyone working at the ID and CDF, there, there's a, a little bit. Um, if they try something new, they can fail and they can get smacked over the head. <laughs> uh, with people who are who are angry at them because there are so many angry people out there that which. Uh, uh, who attack the, the public broadcasters all the time. And if they see that it works at one public broadcaster, like at the ZDF, it's very much more likely that another public broadcaster will also uh, try that, uh, try out that course of action. Well, this is very close. A little bit beyond Mikado. <laughs> that's that's very, that rings very close to our heart because uh, I mean we do have our WGU Alpha Alpha night program and we would have loved to include Bernd das Brot in that. So for all the people who are right now composing tweets at Can ZDF, we it? well, <laughs> maybe in the future and uh, maybe we're depending on all the people composing tweets right now at ZDF uh, for all the activists who are. Well, who, who do have experience with uh, mass mailing members of parliament? Um, they, they actually they, they 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 know that mass mails that follow a template are well um, not as not as impactful as mm -hmm. individual letters. So, yes. is it is it is it a detriment if they include in their in their tweet the ug ug hashtag or uh, any any yeah. other campaigns campaign model? Or, or should the it Germans the German slogan? for public money, public content, öffentliches Geld, öffentliches Gut, ÖG, ÖG. Um, yeah, well, um, you can do that. So we can we can uh, monitor it a little bit and see who else is interested in that. You can also reach out to the um, to the Wikilabs broadcast group in Wikipedia. Um, they're a group of activists who have experience in that and who are standing by to help public broadcasters understand the Wikipedia and to see whether and where the content fits. So there's a lot of ways to engage in that. And if you and if you have um, ideas for that, or just questions, you can reach out to me anytime. Uh, you, you have my address at the Medium article at, at uh, Wikimedia Foundation, or you can just write me at um, bernd.fiedler at wikimedia.de. And yeah, I'm happy to help because there's good stuff. We want to, we want to have it in the public domain. Let's make it possible together. <laughs> I need help. 
that sounds like a call to action in the in the um, background background chat we had before we went live. You mentioned something about um, the, the big the big how do you say uh, the big gulf of um, of material that's already been produced and is in a kind of legal limbo that is not so easily released right now. Can you tell a little bit more about that? Um, I think I misunderstood your question there. Um, um, I mean, we have a, situ a similar situation um, in the United States um, with with works that have published uh, that have been published after the 1920s, where copyright uh, laws has, has been made more stringent and uh, yeah. the original creators can't be contacted anymore. Yeah, yeah. That, um, we have two courses of action that, that the public broadcasters are trying right now. I mean, if you ha if you're sitting on a on a treasure box, you want to open it up and share it, if it doesn't get. <laughs> Less, uh, less worse, worse well. Um, so the idea is trying to provide content that they already have produced, but uh, uh, clearing the rights for that stuff that's already is produced is a pain in the ass, and it's really it's really hard um, and sometimes impossible to reach every creator who was uh, who was connected with a production. So everything that is in the past is kind of lost for our goal. Uh, for Creative Commons licensing, especially stuff that's uh, being produced uh, that has been released after 1970 or so. Um, so they, they are opening up their archives and that's that's really a treasure for Wikipedia. Um, they can then pro they can then link to it and they can at least access it indefinitely. Um, but uh, the other course of action seems to me much more um, yeah much more sustainable to see in in which new productions from now on, we can implement Creative Commons licensing, and uh, so that uh, we can only look and walk into the future uh, here. Although I'd love to see all the good stuff I've been seeing on the air already uh, to to become Creative Commons, but that's really hard. Well. Not to end on a on on a on a dystopic note, but to go forth with the utopias. There is a way to to open at least the the future releases, and uh, you've you've shown us how to do that. And we thank you. I mean, we are the unofficial public broadcasting cosplay channel at RC3. Uh, so, anybody who's interested in having more interesting night program for future programming, please contact Bernd. Bernd, thanks again so much for being on air right uh, right now with us, and uh, keep up the good fight in the name of the love of public broadcasting. I'm counting on you. See you soon. See you. Bye, Bernd. <laughs>